Welcome to this funeral service for the late Katrina McKeever. Katrina Boji, as we knew her affectionately, we were sorry to hear of her passing after such a long life of over a hundred years. But as the Bible reminds us, it is nothing compared to eternity. And we extend our sincere condolences today to the wide circle of her relatives, particularly her more immediate family, uh, the families of her first and second cousins. And our thoughts are especially today with Christina McCaskill, Mary Campbell and Ruth Smith, who were a great support to Katrina while she was still in her own home and also during her time in the Blar Bouye Care Home. And we also want to pray for the staff of Blar Bouye Care Home that they would be encouraged and upheld in the invaluable service of care they provide for the home's residents and of course for the residents of the home also. We're privileged to live in an area where such care is available to us, not only in Blarbuya, but other care homes around us as well, and in the hospital and hospice. Short biography uh, of Katrina's life before we begin the worship. Katrina saw many changes in a lifetime spanning over a hundred years. She was born on the 20th of December, 1923, being the youngest in a family of seven, two of whom, James and Jesse, had died in infancy during the 1918-1920 Spanish flu pandemic. Her father, also called James, who with two of his brothers worked on the fishing boat Corona, died when Katrina was 18. Katrina was educated in Nock Primary School, and after World War II, she worked for 12 years for a firm of accountants in Stornoway. Her grasp of the work was so good that the firm wanted her to undertake a course uh, to gain accountancy qualifications. One of her sisters, Mary Jane, died in the 1950s and the late 50s, uh, and the late 50s rather, Katrina's mother became ill, so Katrina left her work to care for her until her mother died in 1969. A significant number of people were converted in the revival experienced in Knock Free Church from 1959, Katrina and her brother and sisters among them. Her brother Hector served in the Royal Navy in World War II and then worked in the Harris Tweed Mills. Her sister, Belle, served as an administrative assistant in the army and afterwards worked for a businessman in Edinburgh. Her sister, Jessie, worked in the Free Church Maxwell House, Eventide Home in Glasgow. Both sisters retired and came back to Lewis in the 1970s to live with Katrina and Hector in the family home in Sordell. Their home was a model of hospitality and Christian witness all year round but particularly during the communion seasons. As age and ill health took their toll on the family, Katrina, whose own health had faltered occasionally, cared for her older siblings. She spent a number of years on her own in the family home before going into Blar Buya Care Home. Her cheerfulness was matched only by her amazement that God had given her a length of days spanning a hundred years. And her effect on all who visited her was positive and uplifting and left them with the impression that they had seen a small glimpse of heaven. And personally, I'm very thankful for the number of times I experienced that in visiting Katrina, particularly in her own home. We're going to begin our worship now singing in Psalm 107. You'll find that on page 22 of the Psalm books. I'm going to read uh, from verse 8, but we're going to sing the last three verses 29 to 31. I'll read from verse 23. Who go to sea in ships and in great waters trading be, within the deep these men God's works and his great wonders see. For he commands and forth in haste the stormy tempest flies, which makes the sea with rolling waves aloft to swell and rise. They mount to heaven, then to the depths they do go down again. Their soul doth faint and melt away with trouble and with pain. They reel and stagger like one drunk. At their wit's end they be. Then they to God in trouble cry, who them from straits does free. The storm is changed into a calm at his command and will, so that the, sh the waves which raged before now quiet are and still. Then are they glad, because at rest and quiet now they be. So to the haven he them brings, which they desire to see. O oh, that men to the Lord would give praise for his goodness then, and for his works of wonder done unto the sons 
of men. And everyone who knew Katrina knew of her longing to reach that haven in heaven that Jesus had provided for her. And we are persuaded that she has now been taken by him to enjoy the rest and bliss of that haven with himself. So these verses 29 to 31, the storm has changed into a calm, and afterwards, Reverend Callum MacLeod will lead us in prayer. and most gracious God. You are the unchangeable one to whom we turn. You do not grow weary, and your years never fail. We rejoice in the worship of your name. We are thankful even now for the way in which your word lifts our minds and our hearts to think of your dwelling place in heaven to think of our Saviour on your throne, to think of the gathering of believers who have passed from the scene of time into eternity, to think of the rest that belongs to them, to think of the marvel of at last being before you, having left behind the pains and sorrows and the toils of this world in which we live. And at last, your people finding the enjoyment of the great promises of the gospel in a way in which they weren't able to enjoy them before. And we pray today that you will help us in our hearts to sense your closeness to us. Even although there is great distance in some ways between where you are and where we are. May we sense today that you are here, that when you carry your people from time to eternity, may we sense not only their loss and the pain of their parting, but may we find also rejoicing because you are taking your people home. We do give thanks to you for the grace with which you save them. We do give thanks to you for the way in which the love of Christ is poured out into their hearts. We give thanks for every way in which that love shows itself in their lives here in this world. We give thanks for every longing and for every desire. And we give thanks for the promised satisfaction 
when they arrive in your presence. And as we thank you today for your goodness to us, we give thanks to you for the life of Katrina. Give thanks to you for every way in which the persevering nature of your grace was evident in our life, for the way in which your love, which you poured out into our heart, sustained her every day. I'm thankful to you that in the midst of the trials and afflictions of life, that she discovered more and more of the depths of the riches of your grace and learned to lean upon you more and more until at last you came to call her home to be with yourself. And we rejoice in the understanding from your word that there is joy even in the heart of our Savior in gathering the people for whom he died around the throne of the great God that you are. And we bless you and we praise you today for your grace in Katrina's life. And in the light of the long life that you lived in dependence upon you, giving thanks to you also for the way in which her life speaks of your faithfulness, of your commitment, of the unchanging nature of your love, and of the way in which you are faithful to all of your promises. And because of that, she is at home with you today. And the storm indeed is changed into a calm. Accept our thanks, we pray, for Katrina's life and even for the life of the family to which she belonged. We give thanks to you for the haven that the home at number 27 was for the people of God. We give thanks to you for the way in which your love flowed from the hearts of that whole family. We give thanks to you for every way in which your fragrance was felt and experienced by the people of God from that village and from the community and from the wider island uh, down through the years of the past generation. And we do give thanks to you for every way in which she and they were rooted in the word of God, for the way in which they shone brightly because of their closeness to you, for the way in which they were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and for the way in which was their delight to reflect and to consider and to, to discuss the things that belong to their salvation, the things that belong to the glory of their Savior, and the things that belong to the covenant of grace established by your Son who loved us and gave himself for us. And so we pray that you will accept our thanks for her and for her family and for her home, and that you would bless us as we uh, reflect upon uh, that empty home, even in your presence here today. And may we, all of us together, long for that same grace and long for that same love, long to experience that same gracious presence of your Spirit in our hearts, uh, and long to have a taste of uh, that heavenly way in which there is something special about the communion of your people when you are present with them. Give to us all today love for your name, love in our hearts for your Son as our Savior, love for one another, and praying that we will all together journey on from this place, ourselves leaning upon you, discovering more and more of the great God that you are, and longing yourselves at last for that same rest and for that same haven, and to await the day when you will call us also into your near presence. We do pray your blessing to be upon the close relatives with whom we gather today, give thanks to you for all of them and all of the way in which they were uh, connected to Katrina and to the family. May you bless them here in their hearts and their loss. May you bless to them uh, with comfort uh, the reflection upon her grace and her faith uh, and her love for your name. And may they all together experience today a, a great portion of your comforting presence and uh, an outpouring of your love in their hearts and you. We do especially give thanks to you for Christine and for Ruth and also for Marion, uh, the care that they uh, showed down to Katrina in these recent past years. We pray your comforting presence for them, your blessing to be upon them uh, with their families and your grace to be in their hearts day by day. And as we give thanks to you for them, we give thanks to you also for 
the care that Katrina received in Blarbuya. Give thanks to you for the home there, for the care offered in it, and for the spirit in which that care is offered. We give thanks to you for such a blessing, and we pray your blessing you be upon the staff and the residents there. May they know your peace at Katrina's parting. May they know that you are the God who is present with them there. We continue before you now, O Lord our God. We pray your blessing to be upon your word to us. It is where you speak to us. It is where you shine upon us. And we pray that as your servant continues to lead us in this time of worship, that we'll see the light of the knowledge of the glory of, the, of God in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ as we hear your word read, as we sing your praises, and as we continue in this time of worship. Hear us, we ask, and what joy as we pray, for we pray all these things for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's read and hear the Word of God, uh, three short passages, firstly in the Old Testament, and that's in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, from verse 8. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the crannies of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He gazes, grazes among the lilies. Until the day breathes, until the day breaks and the shadows flee, turn, my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag on cleft mountains. In two passages from the last book of the Bible, the book of the Revelation, firstly chapter 21, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. In the final chapter 22, the first five verses. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Amen. May God bless to us these readings of his own holy word. In that first passage in the Song of Solomon, there are two or three things I'd like to set before you as we gather here today in memory of Katrina's life and appreciation of God's grace shining through her life here while she lived. It is surely impossible when the likes of Katrina passes from our midst not to think of heaven because she lived a heavenly life. There was a spark of heaven in her soul and through her life 
it showed itself. And there are two things that we miss most when separated from loved ones, even if it's temporary in this life, but especially once they are gone from the scene of time. The first is their face, the second is their voice. These help to identify us. And while we appreciate video communication, it's not the same as being in the immediate presence and with someone you love. Because there you see the nuances of expression, the smile, the sadness, the sparkle in the eyes, the voice and the face, as they are in this passage in the Song of Solomon, are vital aspects of a relationship to each other and especially of the Lord's people and their relationship to Him. And the two things I'd like us to dwell our minds briefly on uh, are, first of all, fellowship with Jesus is precious to His people. This account in the Song of Solomon is of a young woman waiting for her loved one to come back, probably serving as a shepherd somewhere else, and he's coming back, and she hears his voice. And in verse 8, the sense of excitement is conveyed by the way that she speaks there. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. And as he is longing to get back to be with her, so she longs for his coming, so that she will again be reunited with him as he comes back to her. And that applies to the relationship between Jesus and his people. They like nothing better than to be with him and for him to be with them. Sometimes in this world, they're not as aware of that as they would like. Sometimes they are very close and know that closeness. But it was an obvious feature of Katrina's life that she loved and valued the closeness of the Lord the presence of the Lord, the Lord's voice through the Scriptures was so precious to her, and she was never ashamed to speak of that. You could never go into her home and leave without reading the Bible, without hearing the voice of the Savior she loved. And these words from Song of Solomon were so evident in your experience as you went to that home and shared that with her. You knew that her beloved was hers and that she was his. And you came away with that impression that there is something intimately precious in that human life. And there's a recognition as well, because when we come to the Word of God and recognize the face, as it were, of Jesus and the voice of Jesus in that, there is something there that fills us when it comes close to us with excitement, just like in that passage in the Song of Songs. That passage speaks about the Beloved showing Himself, but it's through a lattice. He's outside still. She can't see Him as clearly as she would like, but she knows it's Him. She recognizes His voice. In fact, the words really literally mean that He was sparkling as he looked through that window, that lattice. And that's how it is for us when we come to know Christ, when we come to know his love, when we come to know his affection for us, when we come to appreciate all that he did for us by his death on the cross, by his resurrection, when we come to appreciate his presence with us, his promises. All of these things together combine to actually see him spiritually, as it were, sparkling through the Bible as he comes to us and as we appreciate his presence. Those who come to draw near to the Lord and who know the gospel appreciate that presence of Christ, and Katrina was certainly one of those. So fellowship with Jesus is precious to his people. Katrina gave abundant evidence of how precious it was to herself. Secondly, fellowship with his people is precious to Jesus. It works both ways. Because in that passage in the Song of Solomon, you notice the description he gives of the loved one, or she gives of, of uh, uh, he gives of, her, of his loved one, dove. He speaks of her voice and of her face. 
my beautiful one. He uses all of these terms to express his love and how he appreciates her beauty, how he values her beauty. But then there is this wonderful invitation to follow him. And the words we find there in these verses are uh, quite beautiful. Uh, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree open ripens its figs, and the vines are in blossom. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Well, these are the words, or like them, that Katrina would have heard in the final moments of life in this world. The Lord came for her. The Lord took her away from this scene of time. The Lord valued her as one of his own. And the Lord would not have her live any longer in this world without going to see himself. And so he took her, and now she's gone to be with him. And those favorable conditions that that passage speaks of, we can appreciate that today. We're coming into springtime. We're seeing growth. Some of the flowers have appeared. The singing of birds has come. Some have come back from their time away. And uh, now we're coming to this stage of the, the year that many people find the most beautiful and the most promising with all the life that's seen around us. Well, that's the picture you have in the Song of Solomon. And it's a picture of God's provision of salvation. The winter is over and gone. God has dealt with the sin of his people. They no longer, longer have to face the guilt of their sin. Anything to do with condemnation, that's all gone. The winter has passed. The dark times are away. The summer has come. Springtime has burst into life. Jesus has risen from the dead, and he takes his people to glory. Jesus enjoys communion with his people, just as they enjoy communion with him. And when he takes them, as he's taken Katrina to be with himself, that is a land of perpetual blessedness, a land of ongoing, unending bliss, a land of the beauty of springtime turned to summer. And they will never be apart again. There will never be separation again. The longings have been fulfilled. Summertime has come. And what of us? What of us who knew her, who saw Jesus in her? What of us today who are here? with the word of God speaking to us. Well, the resurrection of Jesus has opened a way for us up to the sunny uplands of heaven. And today through the gospel, he is now calling you and I to follow him. I'm sure you've experienced, most of you, if not all of you, at an airport when you're waiting for the flight that you're booked on, just before the flight is due to leave, You'll hear through the tannoy, final call, flight so-and-so, at gate so-and-so, the gate is now about to close. Now, that's something that really stirs your mind if you haven't gone to the gate. It's the final call. This may be the final call that you ever hear from the voice of Jesus. And you don't want that gate to be shut. You don't want that door to heaven to be shut when you come to leave this world. Final call, don't let it be so spiritually. You knew Katrina, you knew Jesus in her life, and now her testimony is left for you and for me so that we will know Jesus for ourselves. May God bless to us these thoughts. Let's pray. Our gracious God, we give thanks for the life of your people, for it is a life that you give them by your grace. We thank you for the benefit it brings to us to know your people and to know what you have done in their lives. 
And we thank you, Lord, as we meet with your people, especially with people like Katrina, whose witness was so clear and so consistent. We give thanks, Lord, that it speaks to us of eternity, that it draws our minds to think of those things which are above, those things which are beyond this present life, those things which are to be desired more than anything else. So, Lord, help us, we pray today, to set our affection on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Help us to set our treasure there. Will you tell us that where our hearts are, where our treasure is there, our hearts will be also. And today, O oh Lord, we do give thanks for the life that Katrina lived as you gave her, that life through your grace. We thank you as we heard for the home she belonged to and for the many people who benefited from it. We reckon, O oh Lord, that it was a the present day equivalent of that other wonderful home that we read of in your word, the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus and Bethany. We thank you, Lord, that this home in Sordal had so much of heaven in it, so much evidence of the love of Christ, and so much of love for his people. We pray that that will remain a blessing to us, to all who knew it and to all who hear about it. Lord, may it be pleasing to you to bless it to us. We thank you for the gospel today, the gospel through which Katrina came to know you. And we thank you that that gospel is still with us and remains with us as a gospel that has come to us as good news from heaven, that has come from your own hand. Lord, we pray that you would help us as you call us through the gospel to yourself. We pray that we may not be unfaithful to that call, that we may not close our ears against it, that we may not think that somehow there are better things for us than what it offers. We ask that everyone here today, O oh Lord, would hear your voice as Katrina did, and hear your voice so that we are drawn to yourself, that we place our trust and confidence in you as she did. We thank you for all the care that we receive, Lord, in the course of this life. We thank you for all who care for us in our times of need especially, and we bless you for Blar Boy Care Home, for all who work there, for all who are in charge of its management. We give thanks for the residents and pray for them. We ask, Lord, your blessing for all the other care homes uh, that uh, exist in our, in our community. We pray for the hospital, for the hospice, for the medical practices, for those who receive care for mental health issues. We thank you, Lord, for all who contribute to our need when Loved ones are taken from us for the undertaker and for the staff there. And we ask that you would make us thankful for the way that they are so willing to help and so professional in all that they do. We thank you for those especially, Lord, who will miss Katrina most keenly, keenly those in the more immediate family circle. We pray for all, Lord, who knew her as a precious relative. We ask today that you would graciously bless them. We pray especially for Christina and for Mary and Ruth who cared for her so immediately. We give thanks for that care. We pray that you bless themselves and that you bless all that they witnessed in Katrina's life as they uh, gave attention to her and to her need. We pray your blessing for this congregation that she loved, for this place of worship. And we thank you for the many years she spent attending the gospel, for the many words of encouragement that she gave. We thank you, O oh Lord, that as we came to know for ourselves personally, it was such a rich experience to know her, to visit her, to speak with her, to have her say a word of commendation or even sometimes of uncertainty. But we thank you, Lord, for everything about her life. And we pray now that you'd bless us as we come to express our thanks and close our service receive our worship we pray and cleanse us from all our sin for jesus sake amen our final singing to god's praise in psalm 73 that's uh, psalm 73 and if you're using the booklets that's uh, on page 14. we're singing verses 23 to 26 nevertheless continually o lord i am with thee Thou dost me hold by my right hand, and still upholdest me. Thou with thy counsel, while I live, wilt me conduct and guide. 
and to thy glory afterward receive me to abide. Whom have I in the heavens high but thee, O Lord, alone? And in the earth whom I desire, besides thee there is none. My flesh and heart doth faint and fail, but God doth fail me never. For of my heart God is the strength and portion forever. I'm sure I will never read these verses without thinking of Katrina, because they are so applicable, I believe, to what was revealed in her life about her love for the Lord. Nevertheless, continually, O Lord, I am with thee. Thank you for your attendance here today. I know the family are appreciative of your presence here with them and for your support of them at this time. There is a collection being taken today, and that collection will go to Blar Boye Care Home. And after the interment, which will be at Agony Cemetery, tea and coffee will be served in the church hall here, and uh, all are invited, not just the relatives. I've been asked to emphasize that. It was always a feature of Katrina's family home that no one was allowed to leave without having at least a cup of tea and excellent baking. And I know that from my personal experience. It doesn't matter how many times I would have to say, well, I've got to, I've got to go and see so-and-so now, or I've got this and that to do. You'll have to take a cup of tea and some scones. There was nothing else for it. You had to stay. And you were always, of course, benef benefited by staying. So please, if you can, enjoy that provision. Now, please remain seated after the benediction uh, till the undertakers have firstly completed their duties. Then, if you allow the family to leave, first of all, I'll invite them to leave here through the uh, first exit here. There will be a lift today, and if you follow the instructions of the undertaker, please just follow his instructions as to where the procession will come to an end. And if you stand now for the benediction, please. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore.